Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you for watching. So in a previous video, I referenced the ability to take a bitmap and turn it into a vector art using something like Inkscape. And I pointed to a video that I made years ago and on how to do the technique. And in looking at the video, it wasn't very good. Um, it was one of the very first videos I did. It was hard to follow. Uh, couldn't really hear me very well and the quality of the image wasn't terribly awesome. So I am going to remake that video now and walk you through the process. So let me open a picture in Inkscape and then walk you through the process of turning the bitmap into a vector art. Let's cut over to the computer. All right, so here we are in Inkscape. We have the image open. I'm gonna blow it up a little bit to show you. It's fairly low quality. If we go into document settings, I believe, document properties, it is 300 by 300 pixels. So not too optimal. Certainly from a bitmap perspective, this would be really hard to bring into some sort of CAD program and scale it to any size, which is why we wanna turn it into a vector art so that we can scale it to any size we want and not lose any precision or fidelity in terms of the actual picture itself. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit. I am going to select the picture. We're gonna go under path, trace bitmap right here. And it's gonna open this lovely window. <clears throat> All right, so right now this is a JPEG image. You will want to save this at some point as an SVG uh, so that you can maintain your vector art. So first thing we wanna do in this window is we want to click live preview. That's going to show you uh, what your trace is going to look like. So default out of the box um, without changing anything. These settings are usually pretty okay. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the techniques that I use and when I use different uh, versions of this. So right off the bat, brightness cutoff is used generally when you have a pretty high contrast image. Something like this brightness cutoff will work pretty well. You can see you got really only two or three different colors. You got the red, you got the green, and then you have what I'll say is the white stripe down the middle. And you can see in the preview over here that it actually does a pretty good job of rendering this. Um, edge detection, <clears throat> by contrast, will just outline the uh, thing that you want to trace. So if we click on this, you can see what it's done is now it just creates the outline across the edges of your image. Now, this is useful if you have something that has a thick border and you wanna capture those outlines. Um, I use this occasionally, but I'll show you in a minute why it's not terribly useful or why it's difficult to use at times, I should say. The last is color quantization. <clears throat> This is going to actually, um, based on the number of colors you tell it, in this case it's set at 8, it's going to try and uh, redraw in vector the colors that you have. Now the preview is only in black and white, I don't know why. And uh, just to note too, invert image is really useful when you do something like color quantization or even edge detection. Um, in some cases, uh, you can invert the image and so you can actually get the opposite of what you want. And so in this case, I think that's what you would want to do for this particular image. <clears throat> a multiple scan, similar sort of thing, except it does multiple attempts to figure out the, uh, the, the, image, the image border and whatnot. Uh, I use this when I have a very difficult project or a difficult image that has a lot of different colors and a lot of different uh, 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 edges in it, and it seems to work a little bit better. Under options here, suppress speckles is useful when you have something that is very um, blotchy. So if you zoom in here, you'll see there's not a lot of speckles around the outside. There's a little bit, but not too terrible. So you want to turn this up a little bit um, when you have something that has a ragged edge. Uh, smooth corners, I generally leave this on one. What it does is if you have a sharp 90 degree here, it'll actually round it over, almost filleting it as it were. Uh, in this case, we want those sharp edges, so you can actually turn this down and it'll create a more uh, peak if you want. Uh, optimized pass, I generally turn this up to about one. Uh, what it does is it decreases the number of nodes in your vector, uh, and that's useful if you bring it into a CAD program that has difficulty uh, processing a vector with a large number of nodes, uh, like Fusion 360, for example. All right, so back to the mode. I am gonna start off with brightness cutoff. We are 
going to say don't invert the image and I am going to click OK. And you can see that it is redrawn on top of your image. Let me slide this out of the way. <clears throat> on top of your image, the actual vector art. All right, so what you have here in front of you, the picture, the originating picture here, and then the vector art here. So we're going to, it's already highlighted. We're going to click on the node editor and you can see not very many nodes at all. And then these points are indeed pointed a little bit more crisp, honestly, than the source image, uh, which is what we were looking for in this case. It did a great job of capturing this white line down the middle. Um, now, if I were to put this on a on the CNC and route it, I'll probably delete that white part in the middle and just make it easier. So this would be a st very straightforward pocket. Now it got a little bit sideways on these, uh, I guess, what are they called? Uh, berries for the holly tree here. So it's not quite round. Uh, to make things super easier for this diagram in particular, I would probably just redraw these berries using a circle uh, rather than the nodes as they're represented here. And that'll give you a nice crisp round uh, circle. And I'd probably eventually also edit these as well. All right, so let's do one more technique. Let's select the image again, and I'm going to show you edge detection and how it's different. All right, so we're going to click OK. All right, there you go. So let's close this window, slide this over. And you can see what it's done is it's really outlined the image. Let me grab this and pull it down. All right. It's really done an outline, but in this case, if you look at it, we'll zoom in, turn the node editor on. You'll see there's actually two lines, one on the outside and one on the inside. Uh, so if you want to maybe do an outline of something like stained glass or something, this is the perfect technique uh, if you want to simulate that in whatever you're making. And so this it can be useful under certain circumstances. Uh, like I said, if you want to, in this case, you could do a very simple pocket with the CNC machine and not route out the stuff that is in black and then pour this with resin, I think it would look wonderful on uh, you know wood or uh, whatever you're making it out of. Now in this case, this void here, uh, you would not obviously want to pocket that because that's the inverse of it. And you can see it did not do a very great job here with the circle, right? Not at all. In fact, it, this one's completely cut off. I don't know why, that's weird. Uh, so what I would do here in this case, again, is I would just redraw these as uh, inside circles and outside circles. And it joined these two together. Look at that. Yeah, so a little bit of editing here on this picture, uh, but not too bad. So those are two different techniques to create a vector art from the same image. Now, if you have a super complicated image with lots of colors and, and you know lots of geometry, it might be a little bit more difficult to get the image you want. But in this case, this is really easy. You saw it only took about two or three minutes to get your vector art, and then you can scale this to any size because it's a vector. You can scale it down, you can scale it up, you can pull it into your CAD program, you can uh, use it on your your Kirk cut. Uh, you know, silhouette maker or whatever you want to do. So super easy technique, um, super useful for lots of different purposes. All right, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, appreciate a thumbs up anyway. However, leave your comments down below so we can make future videos better. All right. Um, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, very important these days. Follow me on Instagram if you want to keep track of the projects I'm working on. And don't forget to be inspired.